morning. This is State Representative Sue Helm of the 104th Legislative District of Dauphin County. Welcome to my legislative report. This morning, we're at the Senior Expo at the Giant on Lingelstown Road. We're going to make a tour of all the vendors, so come with me and let's take a look. I'm here with Laura Cochran from Pinnacle Health, the Fredericton Outpatient Center in Mechanicsburg, and she's here today doing bone density screening. Laura, tell me why people should have bone density screenings. Well, Sue, we really like patients to have the knowledge of how dense their bone is. It lets you know what risk of fracture that you would be at as you age. So bone density screenings are great. They let people know that whether they should go ahead then and have a full DEXA scan, which is really the gold standard in measuring bone density. Well, tell me, when you do things like this, which I really appreciate you coming to my expo this morning because there's a lot of people here going to have these screenings, like how many times do people come here and have a screening like this and find that they do have a problem? Okay. Well, it depends on the age, and a lot of times it's um, people who are uh, over the age of 50, we really recommend having the study done, uh, over 50, and postmenopausal women. So men, we also do this on men. And um, it's, we, it just varies on people's history. If they have a family member that has osteoporosis, if they're smokers, if they have medication that affects calcium absorption, because calcium is the main mineral stored in the bone. And what happens if they find that they do have a problem? Is there medication to correct this? Yes, we really like them to be referred to their family physician. Um, we let them know that if there is an abnormal reading on their d the density you know, screening or the full DEXA, that they speak to their physician. The physician would then decide whether they have to change their diet and if, if they need to take any kind of medication. You've heard of commercials like that talk about Boniva and Actinel and Fosamax and uh, injections like Reclast. All of those are medications that do affect and help bone density. I think that's important what Laura said. If you come here and you find you do have a problem or you have a chest, go to your family physician, take care of it, don't be afraid of it. I agree, Sue. Are you interested in having a test yourself? We can do it. It just takes a moment. Why not? Let's okay. give it a try. All right. Now, Sue, are you dominantly right or left-handed? Right-handed. Okay, so we're going to be measuring your left hand. If you can switch your microphone to the other hand, that would be great. I don't want to get involved in Oh, I know. Now that's interesting. Why do you switch hands? Well, the non-dominant hand is less exercised. Okay. And if you have more exercise, usually weight-bearing exercise, then that side is usually stronger or denser is what it's led to believe. So we do the non-dominant hand to hopefully get a more true number. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and put your hand in. You're going to put your hand between the middle finger between the bars and push it back till it won't stop anymore. Okay, and then I'm going to rest the lever on it just to remind you to be still. Okay, just like that for me. Okay, you can go ahead and remove your hand for a moment. I'm going to see an image here, and that image will let me know that I have enough of your finger on in order to get a measurement. Okay. okay, that's showing me that I have enough of the finger on to get a good measurement. And now it's going to run the analysis, and that analysis will come up with a T-score. And the T-score will let us know whether you're in the normal or abnormal range. Okay. Cross your fingers. I'll do that. <laughs> We're all standing here and waiting. <laughs> That's fantastic. Sue, your T-score is positive, 2.4. So that means that your value is above the normal range. Normal is negative 1.0, and you're a positive 2.4. Wow, not bad Which for makes, it. <laughs> basically what that tells us that you are not at a risk for fracture. Well, that's great news. I okay. appreciate you telling me that. Right. <laughs> you do right. a we'll fantastic you, job we'll here. We'll you a sheet to take along with you. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thanks, Sue. And now we're here with Jan Michael from the Susquehanna Township Parks and Recreation Program. And Jan actually runs the summer program, so tell me about what you do. Uh, in the summer, we have two basic programs. We have a playground program, neighborhood program uh, for children in the neighborhood. And then we have our day camp, which is housed in Holtzman down the street here. Uh, and that's for children from five to uh, 13. And then we also have uh, tennis programs going on and uh, all kinds of trips happening during the summer as well. 
Well, summer's over this year, but it's obviously be here again next year. If a parent wants to enroll their children in these programs, how do they go about doing that? Well, there's several ways they can come directly into our office, which is down on the lower level of the municipal building, or they can also go online at SusquehannaTWP.com, and all of our registration forms are also there. And is there a charge for this? There is a charge for our day camp, and honestly, it's, it's, when you figure it out hour by hour, it's pretty good. Uh, $68 for resident and 78 for non-resident for the week. And the neighborhood playground program is free. The only thing we charge for is our weekly uh, field trips. And on the average, how many families take advantage of this program? Um, you know, it's kind of hard to say because they come and go, but I would say uh, in our day camp, probably um, 75 to 100 families and probably about the same with our playgrounds, different families. And we could still do more if more families wanted to get involved? Absolutely. We're happy to take, we've actually, um, we, we're trying to build our playground programs back up a little bit and we're always happy to take them in there as well as our day camp, both programs. And I believe you do have a background with students, so tell me what you did before you did this. I was a middle school teacher for 34 years in Susquehanna Township Middle School. I taught Spanish, and I also was uh, very heavy involved in the sports program. I was the assistant athletic director for a number of years. Well, we appreciate what you do, and parents, come see Jan, and let's get your kids enrolled in one of these programs for next summer. We're now with Lori Hamilton from Home Instead Senior Care. Lori, tell me what you do. We provide non-medical care for seniors in their homes or wherever they call home to keep them independent for as long as possible. So some of the services that we provide are things like uh, personal care, um, assistance if somebody has had surgery, re helping them return home safely, and um, we help with uh, medication reminders, meal preparation, light housekeeping, and incidental transportation. And how do we find you? If a senior is interested and they see you on TV today and they want to know how to contact you, how would they do that? They can um, either go on the website, it's homeinstead.com, or they can call us at 540-5201. Now, what if somebody wants to just use you for a short time? Is there a, do you have to sign up like a contract or anything, or how does this work? Well, we are licensed by the Department of Health in Pennsylvania, so there is a service agreement that you do sign, but there is no, it can be temporary care for someone who just needs us for a short period of time, or we can work up to 24-7 with people that need long-term care. I know one of the simple things is meal preparation, like, do you bring meals in or do you help the person prepare the meals or how does that work? We help the people prepare the meals in their home. So, um, and if it's someone, for instance, say that we're working with that um, has some dementia or something, we can help them to remember, some, get them engaged in activities and to um, bring back memories of the days when they did some cooking. But if someone just needs meal preparation, we would go to the store for them. We could help prepare their meals and make some ahead and freeze them for them um, and they could take them out meal by meal if needed. I know you said you remind people to take their medications like do you call them or do you how does that work? Okay. Um, well we have families or medical personnel that would fill the um, pill planners and then what we do is we um, have caregivers that go in and when they're there they would remind the clients to take their medications. And light housekeeping, I'm sure you're not made for a day, but tell me what you'd help do with, with the housekeeping. Um, what we try to do is keep a, a, you know, a relatively clean house clean. So we um, will do uh, vacuuming, dusting, mopping the floors in the kitchen, the bathroom, and just overall, um, you know, the lighter type of clean out the refrigerator, things like that. Well, it sounds like Home Instead Senior Care is a really great service. I know everyone wants to stay at home as long as possible, so we appreciate what you do. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And now we're with the Office of Vocational Rehabilitation, Bureau of Blindness and Visual Service. And I have two ladies here that are going to tell you what they do. First, we're going to start with Deborah. My name's Deborah Robinson. I'm a rehabilitation teacher, and I help people that have some vision loss um, learn to be independent in their homes by using adaptive techniques, either visual or auditory, tactile, helping people to stay independent. 
We also says that uh, I'm looking at your signboard here. Specialized services for children, advocacy, information, and referral transition services. Do you want to speak anything about that? Um, we service young children all the way up to individuals in their 90s. And again, the key is developing techniques to be independent and safe. Well, thank you. Now we'll switch over. Do you want to introduce yourself and tell us what you do? I'm Natalie Barbush. I'm a social worker with the Bureau of Blindness and Visual Services. And tell us, are you out on, like, do you go on location or do people come to see you or how does this work? Generally, we go to the people in their homes, um, but sometimes we do have them come into the office. Okay. And about how many, like say for Dauphin County, about how many people would, you know, be there looking for your services? Do we have a lot or... Well, I provide services to Dolphin and Lebanon counties at the time, and I service about 70 customers at this time, and I would say more than half are Dolphin County. Okay. And if somebody needs your services, how do they know or how, how can they contact you? They would contact us, us at the Bureau of Blindness and Visual Services. Is there a phone number? Uh, my direct line is 705-8621. Well, thank you. This is so important to people who have visual disabilities, and we appreciate you being here today and um, telling everyone has come what you do. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and now we're here with Leah LaVan, and she's here today to talk about stress and posture tests today. Uh, chiropractic. You're married to a chiropractor, but you've also been doing this for a long time. Tell me, first of all, what you do. What I do is I set up health screenings and health fairs and health talks in Harrisburg and we do this to try to educate the community about true health and wellness um, through chiropractic care. And what we're doing here today is we're doing stress and posture evaluations. And we're doing that because if the bones of your spine shift out of proper position, that puts dangerous pressure on your nerves that exit the spinal column and that can cause things like low back pain, headache, anxiety and all types of other problems within the body. So our job is to teach people about taking care of your spine which takes care of your nervous system. And you're actually doing a test today? Yes, we're doing posture tests. If someone's posture is off, that indicates that their spine may be off. And that means that your body is functioning at a lower state of health. So posture tells a lot about one's health. When I saw her signboard, it really got my interest. And I just, like, I always was confused if I should go to a regular doctor or a chiropractor. How would I know when I should go to a chiropractor? What would tell me that? That's a great question. Um, I believe that everybody should be checked chiropractically. And what you're doing, what we promote is for people to get checked. It's just like taking care of your teeth or going to the gym or eating right. Chiropractic is about having a healthy nervous system and your nervous system is the number one system in our body. It trumps all other systems for importance. So everybody should be checked. And when someone goes to a chiropractor, like how often do you go? Is it important to go like every month or every year? Or how? Tell me about that. Well, that would be determined by the chiropractor once he evaluated you, and that would depend on your current level of, of health as to how frequently you would need to be seen. Well, this is very interesting to me. I just, I recently went to a chiropractor and I was amazed. I said, after sitting on the house floor, after that budget, you're in there every day and every day, I felt kind of stiff and I thought, what's going wrong here? But I went to a chiropractor, now I feel as good as new, it's great. So we appreciate you being here and what you do for, for Dauphin County. It's wonderful and what your husband does. So thank you for educating the people here today at our Senior Expo. Thank you for having us, we appreciate it. Thank you. With two million residents over the age of 65 and the fourth highest percentage of senior citizens in the nation, Pennsylvania is a desirable place for con artists. With that in mind, the Attorney General expanded efforts to educate more seniors how to protect themselves against fraud through his Senior Crime Prevention University program. The Senior Crime Prevention University is an interactive video that features older Pennsylvania sharing new twists on common scams and often misunderstood subjects. The presentation includes some information on identity theft, especially how trusting individuals can safeguard their good credit and shield their personal financial information. And I'm sure there's a lot of people here that have
been subject to some of these situations, especially identity th th uh, fraud. We've heard that so often. I'm still going to talk to you a little bit about uh, Nelson Brewster. He is a civil investigator three for the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, Civil Rights Enforcement Section. He is a retired York City police officer and member of the Attorney General's Municipal Drug Task Force with 20 years of service. Nelson holds an associate's degree in police administration from the Philadelphia Community College, bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Elizabethtown College, and master's degree with honors in leadership and pastoral studies from Lancaster Bible College and graduate school. He has received numerous citations and awards during his law enforcement career. Nelson is the recipient of the York County Black Ministers Association Martin Luther King Award for Outstanding Community Service and Leadership to the City of York. Nelson has trained at the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency as a crime prevention instructor, Penn State Williamsport for community-oriented policing, and at Harrisburg Community College for police supervision. Nelson is a member of the Fraternal Order of Police, and Nelson, come on over here and tell everybody about what you do, and then after he's finished, we will award our door prizes. As Rep Representative Sue Helm has explained to you, uh, the senior Crime Prevention University educates older Pennsylvanians and their families throughout the Commonwealth uh, on crime prevention. So th this morning our goal is, our purpose is to make you scam smart. That's, that's our goal to say today, that's our mission. That when you leave here, you'll be scam smart. You'll be able to share this information with your neighbors and with your friends. We believe that educating seniors about crime and how to avoid uh, becoming a victim is the best deterrent to crime. Education is the best deterrent to crime. So the theme of this Senior Crime Prevention University is aware, avoid, and alert. So if I can get your attention over here to our poster, this is our theme. Aware, avoid, alert. We want you to become aware of the latest scams used by crooks. We want you to find out how to avoid becoming a victim. And third, know the appropriate officials to alert when you feel as though you have been victimized uh, by the bad guys. We have several clips. They're short clips. Uh, charitable contributions, estate planning, home improvements, power of attorney, sweepstakes, checks and money orders, and account verification. Why are we doing this? Because the bad guys are clever. They're very clever. They are good actors who disarm their victims with a nice guy approach. In actuality, they are a wolf in sheep's clothing. There are a couple characteristics about these bad guys, and I'm calling them bad guys instead of con artists because of uh, my law enforcement career. And, and by the end of this presentation, you'll understand why I'm calling them bad guys, because that's exactly what they are. Uh, there are several characteristics these bad guys have. The first one is that they're highly mobile. Now, what do I mean by that, that they're highly mobile? They know who you are, and they can get around very good from neighborhood to neighborhood, from community to community. They're highly mobile. Secondly, the second characteristic I want to share with you is that they're verbally fluent. Verbally fluent. These guys are good. These guys are good. They can run a good game on you. If you think you can engage them on the phone and think you're going to have some fun talking to them, you're going to wind up being a victim we would recommend that you hang up. They are verbally fluent. They can run a good game. The third characteristic I want to share with you is that they have a good sense of timing. Now, what do I mean by that? A good sense of timing is that they know when to strike. They hit you when you're down. A good example would be if there was a crisis in the area, and many of you are familiar, early in the year we had record rainfall here, and we had lots of damage, property damage, even loss of life and the Pennsylvania area was uh, declared a disaster area. You recall that. Uh, the bad guys target 
target these crises, crises, and when something happens, they are right there, Johnny on the spot, right on the scene, trying to swindle you out of your money. They are highly mobile, verbally fluent, and they have a good sense of timing. They believe that you deserve to be scammed, and they will steal whatever they can get their hands on, your life insurance, your retirement income, your little nest egg that you have tucked away, whatever is of value to you, these guys and gals will take it from you. They will steal it from you if they get an opportunity. We're now here with Trudy Plumpton from the Pennsylvania Insurance Department. And we all know what it's like to pay insurance bills, but tell me, what is the Pennsylvania Insurance Department, what do you actually do? The insurance department licenses and regulates all the agents and companies that sell insurance in Pennsylvania. We also license public adjusters. And a part of that is um, approving rate increases, which people are very unhappy about right now due to the storms and everything. And our bureau, the Bureau of Consumer Services, takes complaints from consumers and calls on our hotline to answer questions about things that they're concerned about, whether it's their claim isn't being paid timely or their claim isn't being paid the way they think it should be paid or they didn't get a refund of their premium, any, all kinds of questions that have to do with whether or not their company's doing what's legal and right. Could you tell me what the uh, hotline number is you mentioned? And I was just wondering for the public if so they would know who to call. What is the hotline number? Okay. If you're local, the hotline number is 717-787. 2317. But if you live in another part of Pennsylvania, you would call the 1 877 881 6388 number. And then you'll be um, asked questions regarding what exactly you want to accomplish whether you just want something mailed to you or you need to speak with someone. Do you want to speak with someone? Is it about health insurance, life insurance, auto or home insurance? And you mentioned about rate adjustments. Like people often wonder, why is why are the insurance rates going up? Like how does that work? Like how is it determined what the rate is? Okay. Well, a lot of people don't understand that insurance is what's called pooled risk, where you put your money in with everyone else that has that same policy, and it's used to pay claims. So if claims are higher than expected, the company needs to raise rates in order to stay in business and pay the claims. Um, in order to raise the rates, they have to file a rate filing with the insurance department, with the commissioner's office, and that's reviewed by um, actuaries who look at the justifications that the company gives. You know, they have to tell why they need to re increase the premiums and how much premium they anticipate they need to pay claims. And that, that rate filing can either be approved, amended, or denied based on what's in the form. So you watch out for us, make sure our rates aren't too high. Well, yes we do, but unfortunately the rates are increasing due to all the storms and things that have happened. It, there have been a lot of claims and, and it's hurting elderly people sometimes, but there's not much we can do about that. Well, we understand. We all hate paying those insurance bills, but we also know how important it is to be covered with insurance. So we appreciate what the Pennsylvania Insurance Department does for us, and thank you. Thank you, Sue, and thanks for being here and having us. We're now here with Doug Hassenbein from the Pennsylvania Department of Banking and Securities, and you have some exciting things going on in your department right now. Could you tell us about it? Sure, Representative. We actually just were merged together. Prior to October 1st, we were, the Pennsylvania, we were separately the Pennsylvania Securities Commission and the Pennsylvania Department. Department of Banking and through some fine-tuning and government efficiency it was decided hey these are two financial agencies they're similar in scope and what they're doing and by combining resources we could probably be more effective in what we're doing in terms of regulating the banking industry and also regulating the securities industry and when we say securities what that means is investment stocks mutual funds as well as the investment professionals that are out there and we always encourage anyone if they're currently working with the stock stockbroker, financial planner, or if they need to work with one, always give us a call. Get in touch with us. Confirm they're properly registered. Sadly, a lot of people know about Bernie Madoff and the damage he did. He wrecked a lot of retirement portfolios, people who built up a lot of money, expected to enjoy retirement. So we always encourage anyone, if you're working with an investment professional or want to, call us up first, 1-800-600-0007 
confirm that that person is properly registered to sell investments and to give investment guidance. It's a free confidential service that will be able to confirm for you just to let you know that they're properly registered. A lot of people work hard over many years to build up their retirement portfolio. We don't want to see them lose it to a scam artist. So our big tagline is investigate before you invest. You know, that is so important because how many people come that you use like services and we never think to check and truthfully I know that I never called to check out my financial advisor so that's an excellent idea I appreciate you telling people that what else should the person, the people that are watching this, what should they know? What should they do? Sure. Well, two points you brought up. A lot of people don't know about the service that we offer and that we exist, but everyone, when you bring up Bernie Madoff, everyone knows about Bernie Madoff. So that's why we try to get the word out to stress this. The other point is, it's another big story in Pennsylvania, is with the natural gas, the drilling in Marcellus Shale. There's a lot of new firms coming into the state and they're looking for investors. They want to build up capital so they could drill more wells. Well, any company, whether it's related to natural gas or green technology or any new uh, technology invention or other invention, if they're looking for investors, again, before you put your money in, call us, make sure they're, legi they're legitimate. Anyone who's looking for investors must also be registered with us. And again, that number is 1-800-600-0007. Well, we appreciate it. That's very valuable information. So anybody that's dealing anything financial, they should call you, your department, and find out if that person is registered to make sure that they're a legitimate business. Exactly, exactly. And any groups out there, if they ever need a speaker or to hear about, sadly, some of the scams that go on, and there's many creative scams out there, you could always give us a call. Our outreach group, our investor education outreach group, our banking outreach group, they're always willing to come and speak to groups to make people aware because, again, we try to stress our tagline, investigate before you invest. Well, Doug, thank you so much for being here and for giving us this information and for knowing that phone number and giving it to the public. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. Appreciate your thank time you. today. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for touring my Senior Expo with me. I appreciate you tuning in monthly and watching our shows. If you have any state-related questions in the future, though, there are going to be numbers on the screen shortly. They will be listed, so please call my office at any time. This is Legislative Report. See you again next month.